I want to talk about this case. I want to talk about police reform. But first, I feel remiss if I didn't ask you, how is your community doing this morning? I read an op-ed where you said there's nowhere left to hide from racism. How is your community doing this morning? Well, of course, Atlanta is grieving the loss of Mr. Rayshard Brooks. We send our condolences to his family, particularly his children, his wife, and his friends. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're trying to recover from that. And uh, the protests are going on here as a result of that. And as I have been saying, you know, just a culmination of these events happening here and across the country. Uh, the mayor has said the use of force was not justified after reviewing some of the videotape, the body cam footage. Can you make that same judgment this morning when we have not had a full investigation yet of what actually happened? I can just go by what I see personally, and if someone is running from the police, um, there doesn't seem to be any justification for shooting someone that is running. There are other ways to recover someone that is fleeing. So mm -hmm. that's all I will say on that for, the, for now. What about the fact that Mr. Brooks took the taser? How does that factor into your thinking on this? Well, you know, tasers are non-lethal um, instruments, and so... That all will be weighed as the investigation moves forward, how that played into the scenario. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll just have to wait and see what the investigation from the GBI, which is doing an independent investigation, what their results are. Absolutely. Everyone needs to wait for all of the facts to come in. Let's get to the bigger issue here. You mentioned nationwide on the issue of police reform. I mentioned you wrote an op-ed. You say it is time to review the operations of the Atlanta Police Department and refashion how we recruit, train, and manage the performance of our officers. The time has come to replace fear with understanding, exchange inhumanity for humanity, and eradicate injustice in every corner of our society. I should add, you also said while these officers in the department are not perfect, you say the department is, quote, filled with great human beings who daily lay their lives on the line in the interest of public safety, a sentiment we all have to remember. How do you balance that, that approach that many good officers have with the problems you point out? How do you balance it? How do you fix it? Well, it's a difficult balance because I do know many of the officers very personally who are the officers that we want in our community, that are policing our community and creating those bonds with our community. But I also know that some of the tactics that police use uh, generally do not square with where we are now as a country and as a community. We have to refashion the way that we interact with our citizens. And so the status quo on how police police has to change, and all of us have to go through that difficult uh, transition of change from elected officials and our policies that we implement to our police officers and the training that they have received mm -hmm. and should receive that should be different in how we interact with the public and how the public interacts with our police officers. All important issues that it's being grappled with by the President of the United States, the Congress, the leaders in both parties, they're fashioning different pieces of legislation. But of course, you're dealing it with it on the local level in your community, so many communities around the country. President Moore, we certainly appreciate you joining us. And I appreciate you having me. Thank